Oh no, says Nate. Now we have nothing to fight with. Do you mean besides your hands? Ow! I knew that was gonna hurt, but I deserved it. <sighs> Hello there, heroes. I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to another Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode review. Every week when I do these videos, I strive to tell you the truth about how I feel about each episode. I don't hold anything back. I give you my honest opinion. Yes, indeed. Truth be told. I don't lie about how I feel each and every week. And if you're sensing anything from my somewhat sarcastic introduction, maybe you get a sense of what this episode was about. But let's find out anyway by taking a look at the 11th episode of Beast Morphers, Tools of the Betrayed. I think Beast Morphers has realized that you're going to score a lot of points with me when you pull ideas from Star Trek The Next Generation. Okay, probably more that TNG was a great show with a lot of great ideas. This episode starts at the Riptide Gym as Devin is leading Ravi and Zoe in a blind fighting exercise. At first, they're completely helpless, but Devin tells them to use their beast instincts, and then suddenly they can hear every single noise he makes and track him without effort. The funny thing about comparing this to Worf testing Ensign Cito in Lower Decks is that Worf's test was completely made up, not about martial arts at all, but instead getting her to defend herself when she wasn't being judged fairly. Here, it's completely legit, though I guess the three having animal DNA that would give them some kind of beast instinct does add to that somewhat. As the three of them take a break, Ben and Betty enter with a package for Devin. They know that he's been eagerly waiting for it, so they decided to bring it directly to him when he arrived. It is a brand new virtual reality headset that Devin's been saving up for for a while. I think this kind of implies that Devin does get a grid battle for salary because he only had that car wash job for a few days and it's been a while since then. He goes to slip it on, but then their communicators chirp. Blaze has been spotted out and about and Commander Shaw sends the Rangers saying that Nate and Steel are already there. The Rangers take off, though Devin stops a second to ask Ben and Betty to take the VR headset back to Grid Battle Force and asks them to please be careful and not let anything happen to it. They promise they will, and Betty immediately puts the headset on, instead flailing her way through a surfing simulation. When she falls off the board and is encountered by a shark, she leaps over a nearby wall, taking Ben with her because of slapstick, and breaks the headset. Look what you did. <laughs> Nate and Steel face off with Blaze and some of the Tronics, engaging in some nice fight banner. Then the other rangers arrive, everyone summons their blasters, and the fight actually begins. Blaze steps back, preparing to create a Robotron, and Devin proves he may just be one of the smartest red rangers to wear the color. He sees this and speed dashes over to Blaze, destroying the monster-making console. Blaze is furious and retreats. Back at the base, Devin reports to Commander Shaw about the broken computer. Nate says that he knows they can fix it, but it's going to take them some time, and that gives them some valuable breathing room. He can finally finish working on those Giga Drone detectors that were mentioned earlier this season, as well as a brand new Megazord combination. In the hallway, Zoe sees Ben and Betty coming in with the busted headset. They explain the situation and know that Devin is going to be furious with them. Zoe decides to take the heat for them, feeling that Devin won't be mad at her because she's a closer friend than they are. He sees them and the busted headset, Zoe claiming that she tried it on and hit her head. Concerned, Devin asks if she's okay, but she says she's fine. He then sees that Ben and Betty are bandaged and asks about that, 
and they have to come up with some kind of excuse about pimples. In the cyber dimension, Evox berates Blaze for yet another failure. He says that he didn't break the computer, the Rangers did. I'm baffled as to how he thinks letting the Rangers break the computer wasn't a failure, but moving on. Evox pulls a get out of my sight, and Roxy sees this from nearby. She realizes that Blaze's quick failure has given her another opportunity to score points with Evox, and she goes to see Scrozzle. Scrozzle rants about the Avatars breaking his stuff and yada yada, I used to rule this planet when it was underwater, loading a computer program that fixes the Robotron Maker instantly. I guess it's not gonna take time, Nate. That was easy. Roxy sees this and silences Scrozzle, getting an idea. If Scrozzle has a computer program that can repair technology, can it do the opposite? You mean break things? I'm pretty sure you can do that with a decently sized stick. Okay, to be fair, I'm pretty sure she meant take things apart, but it just didn't come off very well. Anyway, he says it should be able to, and she tells him to load that program into the Robotron Maker. She'll make a Robotron that can dismantle the Rangers' weapons. <laughs> After the theme song, Nate shows the Rangers and Commander Shaw his brand new Giga Drone detectors. These will be placed all around the city and detect when a Giga Drone teleports in, preventing surprise attacks. Now, you may be thinking that there are already alarms that go off when a Giga Drone teleports in, but this show is well written and actually provides an explanation. Just last week, a Giga Drone teleported in underground, though I'm still not exactly sure how that's possible, and they didn't know about it. Nate says the detectors have to be deployed across the city, and they must be assembled on site since they, you know, have to point in different directions and stuff. Of course, you could have just made them adjustable, but anyway. Devin has each of the rangers take one and wisely tells Ben and Betty to take one and to build it as a team. Funny little side note here, Commander Shaw tells them to make sure to pick spots where the public will not be able to see these things. You know, spots like strapped directly to a tree or high up on a tall pole, completely invisible. Roxy arrives in the city, seeing Ben and Betty working on their detector, but since she doesn't know what it is, she's not really concerned about it. She does know that the rangers should be by to pick the two of them up soon, so she gets to work, creating Tooltron from a wrench. The robo-monster demonstrates its ability by zapping a bike and disassembling it. Indeed, Zoe comes to pick the two up, loading their tools into the car. Roxy tells Tooltron to zap her communicator because without that, she can't summon her morpher. He takes the shot, but she then moves. The beam hits the car, meaning that the car should have been disassembled, but apparently the beam doesn't work on glass. It reflects up to the detector, breaking that. Now, if you're sitting there wondering why I went on and on about truth and honesty and lies at the beginning of this video, we're getting to it, and I hate to say it, but this is not handled well. As Ben, Betty, and Zoe are on their way back, Nate activates the network of detectors. He notices that the one that Ben and Betty put together isn't working. They use a security cam to take a look at it and see it sitting on the ground in pieces, assuming that the two never built it in the first place. The other three finally return, Zoe having gotten them all ice cream as a nice little reward for their hard work. The others can't believe that they went and got ice cream and Ben and Betty didn't even put their detector together. But Ben and Betty insist that they did put it together and Zoe confirms this. Devin all of a sudden out of the blue brings up the VR headset again, noting how strange it was that the headset was completely smashed, but Zoe was uninjured while Ben and Betty were bandaged. Ben and Betty admit to the lie, and Devin says if Zoe lied to him about the headset, how can he trust her about the Gigadrone detector now? Embarrassed and frustrated, she leaves. Jax, oh, by the way, hi Smash and Jax, welcome back, finally, following. 
In the lab, Nate and Robbie tell Devin that he may have been just a little hard on Zoe, who was only trying to protect Ben and Betty. But he just waves this off, and they leave to finish the last Gigadrone detector. In the hallway, Jax catches Zoe and says he believes her, but maybe Devin had a point about her honesty. Of course, this doesn't really help the situation, and Zoe says she needs to go think things over. The Rangers finish putting together the Gigadrone detector and activate it. And if it had been a Robotron detector, it would have started going nuts right away, because Roxy and Tooltron were standing right there. The Rangers morph, though I can't understand why Tooltron didn't try to zap them before that, but whatever. They summon their blasters, and Tooltron zaps those, breaking them. That's okay, they have other weapons they can summon. Tooltron zaps their teleporters, breaking those. Oh no, says Nate, now we have nothing to fight with. Do you mean besides your hands? This approach is a ranger never lets go of their weapons. You guys are martial artists. The word karate literally means empty hand. Go and hit that thing with your hands and also your feet. Anyway, Tooltron takes aim at steel, since one little zap can take an entire robot ranger apart. Ravi quickly jumps over to the side, grabbing a hubcap and tossing it to steel, which he uses to deflect the beam. Okay, so I'm not sure what the rules are here on what Tooltron's beam can take apart, versus what it'll just reflect off. Anyway, the beam reflects up and hits the world's unluckiest Gigadrone detector, dismantling it for a second time. Roxy sends Tooltron to find Zoe to break her weapons while she deals with these rangers. Devin realizes that Zoe was telling the truth. Roxy zaps at them to get their attention back on her, and Devin and Ravi punch back, irritating Roxy so she retreats. She sure has a weird definition of taking care of the rangers. They realize that Tooltron is after Zoe, so they call her, but she doesn't answer. Realizing that Tooltron may have already found her, they call Jax. He says that she needed some time to think, and probably went to a nearby park. And yep, Tooltron has indeed already tracked her down, and has learned, this time zapping her morpher before she could use it, dismantling it. He summons Tronics, and while she puts on a brave face, she's in it pretty deep. The Tronics advance on her, and she uses her Jackrabbit jumping ability to get behind everybody. This apparently counts as using her beast power on a Robotron, a factor in this plot so small that I actually just realized I completely forgot to mention her putting one of the data chips on this Robotron in the first place, and the chip records her Jackrabbit jumping ability. Cruz then shows up with a new equipment drop for everyone, Grid Battle Force apparently having spare morphers lying around, which both does and doesn't make sense. But anyway, the Rangers gear back up. They blast the Tronics and the Robotron, sending its dismantling gun flying off to the side, which they then destroy. It's time for Zoe to morph, and oh man, oh man, she's the only one that needs to morph. Here comes a great Zoe solo morph, and it's another freaking Instamorph. This fight is rather short and sweet, though I love that when Tooltron doesn't have his gun anymore, he pulls out two giant wrenches as his weapons. Devin and Nate get Tooltron in their sights and blast their troubles away, heading back to base afterwards. Scrozzle teleports in once the other rangers leave, complaining that now Roxy even has him cleaning up her messes. He grabs the data chip, which wasn't vaporized, because of plot convenience. Back in the cyber dimension, he scolds her for leaving the chip behind, her mocking him for it. <laughs> oh, these two. What a couple of cards, am I right? He shushes her and says it's time for a Giga Drone with a Delta Surprise on the inside. Is that better than an Intel inside? 
The detectors work as advertised, advising Grid Battle Force that a Giga Drone is inbound. Commander Shaw has all Zords deploy. Nate shows off the other thing that he was working on, a battle mode for his Wrecker Mantis Zord, and what I really love is how the latter arm goes through the chest to become the two arms. The other rangers form the Beast X Megazord, and presumably Steel is flying around somewhere. The Gigadrone lands, and a second Gigadrone crawls out of its back. Also, it looks oddly like Nate's Megazord, but this is never explained. The rangers are having a tough time dealing with the two robots, so Steel suggests the new Megazord combination. Just like we practice, says Nate. Ah, uh, off-screen establishment. Steel's Jet Zord becomes a few extra pieces attached to the Wrecker Zord, becoming the Striker Megazord. Striker Morpher, Striker Saber, Striker Megazord. Hmm. Who the f*** is in charge of naming things in Pacific City? Probably on reflection the same people who came up with Pacific City. Of course, the new Megazord gets the upper hand in its fight, but oddly enough, this turns the tide in the other battle as well. They push the two Giga Drones together, and Nate realizes this is a chance to end the battle. The Striker Megazord fires a huge blast as a finisher, and the Beast X Megazord uses its rarely seen Rider Kick finisher, Viruses Eliminated. Back at the gym, Devin has bought Zoe a carrot smoothie as an apology. He realizes that he overreacted, and what she was trying to do was actually really nice. Zoe also apologizes, realizing that her lie, while well-intentioned, did give Devin a reason to doubt her. They hug it out, friends forever. Ben and Betty enter, and you might realize that I'm not wincing over that this time. Using their well-established technical skills yet again, they have repaired the VR headset. Devin eagerly tries it out, Betty trying to warn him about the shark in the surfing simulation, but he waves her off. He does the surfing, falls off the board, and encounters that very shark. He staggers back onto a skateboard, rolling back and falling over a wall. The headset flies off, and Ben dives for it, catching it. <laughs> when I say I'm gonna throw some shades, I don't mean like across the room like that headset kept flying. Episode 11, Tools of the Betrayed. Pros, very nice focus for Zoe, progression of technology on both sides, and better ending comedy. Cons, sacrificing Blaze for Roxy, the moral is clumsily handled, and a weird way to push the Beast Powers thing forward. Once again, not bad, head and shoulders above Ninja Steel, but for this show, kinda average. Tools of the Betrayed gets 3.5 shades out of 5. Zoe is just such a fun character with her bubbly personality and enthusiasm. But that also means that when she's sad or upset, that emotion shows through really well. Full credit to Jacqueline Zaslowski for an excellent performance in this episode. When Zoe gets sad and needs to run away and think for a little while, I just wanted to go and give her a hug and yell at Devin for yelling at her when he was right. One thing I'm really loving about Beast Morphers is this idea of technical progression on both sides. For the Rangers, we finally got the Giga Drone detection system that we got told about at least five episodes ago, probably more, as well as Nate modifying the new Zords to give them a new Megazord combination. But we also had technical progression on the villain side with a Giga Drone that can now carry an entire other Giga Drone with it. And yeah, the ending comedy stinger actually worked for once. And you know why? It's a reason that I've been talking about for a while. It involved the Rangers. See, the usually serious and very dedicated Devin flailing his way through a VR game is funny because it's a juxtaposition. Seeing Ben and Betty do that is not funny because that's what we expect from them. So by now, you all know that I love Roxy. I guess I love both of the Yellow Rangers this season, huh? She is my favorite character on this show, and she was excellent in this episode as well. But I didn't like how the episode sacrificed Blaze's development to keep pushing Roxy forward. 
Blaze goes out and can't even form a Robotron when this was supposed to be his turn to impress. Roxy gets another turn. How can Blaze catch up and get the upgrade now? I mean, maybe we'll find out, but... Mm. I really didn't like how the moral was handled this week because it was just kind of clumsy. As I said earlier, all of the conflict just happens at once. Devin puts together that Zoe lied to him about the headset and instantly gets upset about that. Instead, I think I would have had him overhear Zoe talking to Ben and Betty about having covered for them, and then he sits on it for a while and gets upset about it and just more aggravated, trying to figure out what she was thinking. Then later, when he reveals that he knows it's a big whammy, instead of us just wondering why he didn't put that together a lot sooner. Overall, this moral delivery really drifted a little too close to Ninja Steel for my liking. The moral did still apply to the Ranger plot, so credit where it's due there, but it's a really simple moral, don't tell lies, and mostly exist outside of the plot instead of being directly involved with it. And this is really minor, I only include it to have a third con, but I did just find it really weird that Zoe jumping over the monster unmorphed was enough to record data on her beast power. That chip is connected directly to the monster's body. If it can record that data wirelessly, why bother connecting it to a Robotron at all? I'd have rather the monster gotten kicked with some of her rabbit kicking power to get that data. This was another strong episode. Please don't get me wrong. When I gave last week's episode a 3.5 out of 5, someone commented and said that that was the lowest score I had given an episode this season. But 3.5 is still better than average. These episodes are not bad. They're just not carrying quite that same level of excitement as early season episodes did. It just seems like Beast Morphers is kind of settling into a quieter, but still good, middle of the season run. But hey, every episode has the exact same chance of exciting me. So let's see if the episodes perk up a little bit with the 12th episode, Real Steel. When Nate and Steel unexpectedly clash, it leads to double trouble for the team. That is just about going to wrap up another Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode review. Heroes, thank you so much as always for watching. Down in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this episode as well as my review of it. Let me know if you agree with me about the moral. Did you feel like it was good, like it was handled in a way that maybe for the kids would understand, or was it just a little clumsy and not quite as good as they've already done it? Let me know that down in the comments below, and while you're down there, make sure you smack that thumbs up button and let me know that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all of my videos and ring that bell. Get your notifications set up so you'll be notified whenever I post brand new videos, such as these Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode reviews. And if you'd like to lend any financial support to my channel, you can head over to ko-fi.com slash videos and get me a coffee. Mmm, it's so imaginarily good. Those are set at $3. I dropped the cup. Oops. And those are greatly supported, and I greatly thank you so much for any support I find at that site. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you. I don't lie about my feelings. And do it again. Every week when I do really, Yes, indeed. Truth be told. This is... The funny thing about comparing this to Worf tensing... Te te the funny thing about comparing this to Worf... So she gets to work creating a rim. Now, if you're sitting here wondering why I'm with... If Zoe lied to him about that, how can he trust her about the... Noting how strange it was that the headset... The other three finally return, Zoe having Zoe... God, Gergen. Meanwhile, in the hallway, Jax catches... Roxy? Uh, that would be trouble if she was there. In the lab, Nate and Ravi tell the Go hit that thing with your hands and also your feet. Anyway, a the she also apologizes, realizing that her lie while well, well, well seeing Devin flail around when fuck they're just not hitting with that same level of excitement that early episode seasons did. Fuck. Do you agree with me?
about what, I don't know. Just do you agree with me? Yes? No? Maybe?